Okay, All so right. here we are. Debate. Let's raise the temperature a little bit in this room because I think these debates were really warm and maybe we should do something more aggressive, I would say. Oh. Uh, I will start by throwing some stuff on him right now. <laughs> so, I met this guy for the last four weeks, maybe six times or so, and he kept me saying this, look, I'm gonna kill you in this debate. He says, in three or four messages that he texts me that I only need five or six minutes to put you down. <laughs> so I said, okay, this is Professor Bemelman, one of the giants of surgery in the world, debating with a, you know, a humble Brazilian who's more than a gastroenterologist than a surgeon. But yeah, let's see, let's see, William. I wish you good luck. So I'm starting with my disclosure, and here you are, you see that my disclosure are mostly for pharma companies, because yes, I'm a fan of biologics, and I think I'm doing the right talk. But you can ask for Professor Bemelman the disclosures. Maybe he, if he says I have no disclosures, look at this guy, he has a golden stapler from Medtronic. <laughs> Does he really have no disclosures? And I'm so happy to say to you that I checked in the leaflet book from this meeting, and there it is, it's there, it's disclosed in Medtronic. So congratulations for doing that. We surgeons need to disclose more what we have. So this guy has a golden stapler, so he has no disclosures? Yeah, let's see that. But anyway, over the next 10 minutes, this is what I'm gonna explore to you guys. And then at the end, let's see if I can convince you guys that yes, biologics do heal, they definitely heal perianal fistulas in Crohn's disease. But the first thing is to know exactly what are we debating here. So first thing, we are debating here complex fistulas in Crohn's disease. I would not recommend biologics for simple superficial fistulas. These patients can be managed with simple fistulotomies with adequate and good healing rates, and you don't need biologics for that. However, some patients have associated luminal disease elsewhere with an indication for biologics, and these are the patients that occasionally can have a simple fistula or whatever. So surgeons like Willem probably know a lot about pathophysiology of Crohn's disease or mostly about fistulas. So let me draw here for you, Willem, some ulcers in the proctitis. So if you have a cryptoglandular fistula, you know you have this uh, uh, interruption of the flow of a gland in the anal verge and then it comes with a cryptoglandular abscesses and moreover with a fistula. However, in Crohn's, it's quite different because you have a deep ulcer probably at the distal rectum and this deep ulcer perforates into, into the perirectal fat and thus uh, a very different uh, fistula in terms of pathophysiology. And with this slide I could win the debate. I'm just showing some studies that demonstrate what is there in the fistula tracts. There's a huge expression of TNF alpha inside the tracts of the fistula in the cells that compose the, both the mucosa that is inflamed and also the tract of the fistulas. So of course it makes sense that you simply use a drug that can reduce this pro-inflammatory cytokine to make it heal. If you can play the video on the right for me as well, I uh, would be appreciate that. Uh, but look, William, on the left we can see a patient with a complex perianal fistula. So, and on the right here we can see a very, very deep inflamed distal rectum. So let me ask you a question. You can reply that. I, I allow you to reply right now. Can you treat this kind of inflammation here, William, in the left or in the right without biologics? Can you do that? I will answer for you. Don't worry. No, you cannot. <laughs> you cannot treat that without biologics, my friend. Let me tell you that. So show me the data. I'm not going to bore the audience by showing accent one data, charm, subanalysis for fistulas, there's data from Sertolizumab pegol, there's currently data coming over from post hoc analysis from Eustachinumab, but I'm gonna do something different for you. I'm just gonna show you one slide of data, and look who wrote this paper. He, he made this easy for me. So he writes the paper by saying that yes, anti-TNF is uh, uh, very good in healing fistulas, it's better than placebo in his meta-analysis and his systematic review with his team in Amsterdam. So thank you, William, for giving me the data and helping me to win this debate. But anyway, this is really interesting stuff. Study from Gartner in DCR 2007. I would like you to focus on this left pair of columns there. So if you just put symptoms on a patient with Crohn's disease, and that's what William thinks, I'm gonna show you why in a minute, you have 18% of healing, but if you associate that with a biologic, you more than double it. So for me, this is, except the fact this is retrospective, all the biases, but it's something there. And then William comes with this crazy idea of the PISA trial, and then the PISA trial, he wants to compare three different groups of patients prospectively, because he, he's a professor, he does very good prospective trials, and I admire that. So he starts doing medication for the patient, 6MP, 6MP for everybody, yeah? 
well, 6 MP for everybody. Chronic cetum drainage in one group, the other group anti TNF, and then you remove it after the cetums after six weeks. And then the group three, you do an advancement plasty. So, why would you use one versus the other if we know that combining these therapies is better? So, it doesn't make sense to me what you're doing with this trial. But anyway, this is just one example of that. It's our humble study, retrospective, biased. Dr. Daluz Moreira is here. He's one of the contributors for this paper. And we can see here 52% of healing rates when you can do that. And recurrence is very low over the years. So, yeah, it's an effective strategy just using surgery associated to biologics in these patients. And now there's more data showing interesting stuff, which means the higher the serum level of the biologics, the higher the healing rates of the fistula is. So what we can see here in this study by Maria Brill's group is that patients that had 20, more than 20 micrograms per ml of infliximab serum level, they have fistula healing and closure much more than the other groups, comes to 80%. So yes, biologics might play a significant role in this. OK, let me give now something that probably he's going to say. Let's see his, his arguments. I didn't see his talk. Maybe we, he would say, well, biologics cost a lot of money or whatever. The Dutch, they, they love this coin study, you know? And I'm going to make it orange for you to show you easier. Yes, they do cost a lot of money. Uh, in the coin study, they demonstrated that they are the most uh, uh, money spent in the IBD care, mostly in Crohn's disease, in the two uh, uh, lower columns there. But yes, they cost money, but they are effective. Second thing that he might say, well, biologics are not safe, despite all the adverse events you can have with, with biologics, but from the fistulas itself, what happens is that when the first uh, studies with infliximab came, these are the rates of perianal abscess drainage in the United, in the United States, and it increased a lot after the infliximab uh, approval. So the present study in 1999 gave us the false idea that you just have to use biologics alone for perianal fistulizing disease. And this is not what I'm uh, suggesting here. If you drain uh, the abscesses, if you curate the tract, you place the symptoms, it's going to be better. And eh? you won't have abscesses in repetition for these patients. But maybe he's, this is something he's going to say. He will say, well, you don't need biologics because you just stitch the internal opening and you curate the tract. And I'm very, very keen that you can bet with me that he will say a lot this word epithelialization of the tract. Because he will probably believe that the cells in the tract are different than the cells in Crohn's disease or whatever. But yes, in this trial with stem cells, the ADMIRE trial, you can see here that placebo rates only for curating and stitching the internal opening without anything else, it's 30%. So yeah, probably he's right, because we can have some, some add additions on that. But if you use other treatments, you can even improve that. And probably this is the final argument, his desperate argument. He would say, well, well you have some studies from Europe, you know, that we, the fistulas are still there, they are dry, the patient doesn't feel anything, he's dry, there's no uh, perianal uh, discharge anymore, but if you do an MRI, the, 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 the fistulas are still there. This is a picture of Professor Bemelman, you know, from the AMC website. And I don't understand anything about Dutch, you know? But I can say something here. I can see patients and I can see results. So what are you, William? You, you give more value to the MRI than having a patient with a dry fistula. Are you a doctor or are you a technician, my friend? You have to explain to me that. How does he practice? So not usually Professor Bemelman practices the way he preaches. And I will show you why. First. This is the, probably the mo mo most important Crohn's disease surgical consensus in the world, just published at JCC. First author, William Bemelman. Look at how many statements. These are only four of the numerous statements that admire and uh, propose to have anti-TNF as a maintenance therapy for perianal fissures. Look at the author, who it is. There you go, the first author, William Bemelman. But then, last week we were at UEGW, and we were so happy to see this paper. Higher infliximab and adalimumab serum levels are associated with perianal fistula closure in Crohn's disease patients. One week ago at the WGW. Again, one of the senior authors, Willem Bemelman. The conclusions, an association was found between anti-TNF higher serum levels and fistula closure in Crohn's disease patients. And there he goes. In the, in the picture, he's like there in the left corner, being a senior author of this group and paper. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to just deliver some final messages to you. The first one would be that in the algorithm of treating perianal fistulas in Crohn's disease, biological agents to date anti-TNF, maybe in the future anti-interleukin, and we still need to study more the anti-integrins, they play a significant role in the fistula healing. 
because one of the most important steps of perineal fistula management is mucosal healing. And these medications are proved to be very effective in uh, healing the mucosa on these patients. So by not having proctitis, the chances that you heal your fistulas and you make them dry, they are much more uh, significant than by not having this. We also have the option of optimizing these doses. As several studies now are doing, there's three studies with, including Professor Bemelman's group study, showing that the higher serum levels you have, the higher rates you can have for perineal fistulas. So I think this is very important to state that they do play a significant role on healing biological fistulas. So there, there you go. We are still friends. I hope after this debate, I would like to invite you guys all to echo this year, and, and then we can have more debates like this in the second masterclass. Thank you very much.